it's interesting. I'm on the other side this time. I guess maybe because I logged on second, maybe. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I didn't know it would do that. I okay. am in the captain's chair now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. So how are you feeling? Girl, it is it's hitting. Yeah. It's hitting. We're close. But when I feel yeah. like this, like I'm so down and like I remember when Derek Lunsford told me a couple years ago, this is obviously before I was pro or anything like that. This is actually when I was in my 16 month off season. He goes and sees my aunt next door from my gym for physical therapy. So I oh, saw okay. him all the time. And um, one time I said hi to him or Drew said hi to him. And he was like, dude, I can't even talk right now because it's burning calories and it like hurts to talk. <laughs> that's too funny. <laughs> and I like left that conversation. I was like, wow, that's weird. Like, what does that even mean? And now, like, now that I'm Olympian, I get it. When you're in the trenches, like, it's like. <sighs> yeah. Well, like I was saying, I'm like, we all have those days. So, uh, you know, just like last week, we can kind of roll right into this. We're on episode three, four, we're on episode four, on four. Episode four. <laughs> four. Yes. So, so we're going to talk about relationships and managing those um, as we go into today's topic. But, um, you know, you were saying earlier that this was just one of those days. So has yeah. it been like just today or has it been like a gradual getting it started, to this point? It hit me yesterday and I thought yeah. it was just maybe Sunday and yeah. not being as busy and you know, not like, it's not like a non-work day. So the days seem a little bit longer. So I was like, I just got to get to Monday. Monday's my busy work day. And boy, was it a busy work day. Oh yeah. And because of this, I have some upper body injury I'm fighting right now. So I had to switch okay. around my, my workout. So usually I do glutes on Sunday. So I have like more time and I'm not rushing. So then I had to gl do glutes today because I had to flip my days yesterday. So it's just been oh. one of the days. Yeah. So hopefully tomorrow will be better. <laughs> well, even like when you uh, messaged me, I was in the gym and I was doing shoulders because that that's what I have to, for today. And I'm, it was taking me so much longer to do shoulders <laughs> than it normally I does. Know. And I'm just like, I'm so I'm struggling because I haven't had a rest day this week. So Ooh. my rest day is tomorrow. Okay. So I, I tried to plan it. So I didn't have like a, like a, you know, a strenuous day for your last day before a rest day. You know what I mean? And I'm just yeah. like, you get to that end and it's like, oh my God, I just can't even push more weight up. Like this is, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I was like, yesterday I was tired, but I was fine. Like I got through my, actually I blew through my cardio pretty easy yesterday and I was like, all right, cool. You know, and then, and today's just been different. I haven't even hit my cardio yet. So we'll be doing that it, after this. It, oh boy. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, your body's asking for a rest day. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll get one tomorrow, kind of. I'm doing a photo shoot tomorrow, so it's kind of a rest day, but not really. Not really. <laughs> Do photo shoots make you exhausted? Yes. 100%. That's why, like, I don't, like, love to do that. I love when they're done and, like, getting yeah. the photos, but during I'm like, oh. Yeah. Well, that's why I never, I never book them, like, when I'm at a show, right? I'll do, I'll do it, like, after the show's over with or whatever, but I just know how much energy I expend during a photo shoot. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't ever like to book them prior to competing. Like, I know a lot of people will do, like, a show and they'll book a shoot on, like, Wednesday or something like that. I can't do that. Me neither. I can't Me do that. Neither. No. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it after. I'll do it the week after or something like that. But I can't. I can't do it right before a show because I'm just. I don't have, and like the pictures don't even look good because you don't have any energy. You know what I mean? So yeah. And I don't know about you. I like my photos to look kind of lean, but al also kind of normal. Like I don't really want a bunch of photos of like when I'm shredded. Like yeah. that's not really like what I want to even market myself as. So yeah. I'm actually doing a beach photo shoot this Saturday morning at sunrise. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I've been oh, nice. to shoot with this photographer for a while, but just to have just some like light, more lifestyle-y yep. like things away from the stage. And I wanted to do it this many weeks out. So I still had a little bit of body fat on me. So I wasn't just so lean. I don't mm -hmm. know. Like, I just feel like it's just a better look overall. <laughs> it is. It's healthier. I mean, people, and, and then it, it just gives a more realistic view of it too. Yes. Like, you, like you can't, you can't look stage lean all the time. I do like to do photo shoots prior to, or like right after a show or something, just to show what you've been able to accomplish. Yeah. You know, but in general, no, like it's like, that's not what I want to look like all the time. I don't, and I've said this before. I don't like the way I look when I'm stage lean. Like I just don't. Yeah. The much. last three weeks or so I'm like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> No. Yep. <laughs> Everything's so small. I call yeah. it small. S M O L L. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's small, like you know, and again, flat. like I said, like the uh, you start getting the diet face, and you get all the the jaw lines really hard. Like even like even now, and I mean, I'm nine weeks out, almost eight weeks out, and I still I can see it like in my cheekbones and stuff. I'm like, oh, I no see more contouring. I see <laughs> like, a lot in your face. No more contouring. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. It looks good. It looks good. <laughs> Now, I, 
and again, I like it to an extent. I like it right now, but right. you know, it'll get to a point where I'm just not, it's just not the, it's just not the most flattering look, you know? And I, and it's, it's one of those things that once you've been in the sport for a little while, you, you evolve to liking your body a little thicker yeah. versus I think, I think newer competitors want to stay kind of stage lean all the time, you know, Absolutely. which is, it's just not realistic for almost everybody, you know, it's just not. Um, and nor is it, in my opinion, for me, my best look, I don't like it. So no. And I think it's too, it's like the, the girls that do stay stage lean year round, it is confusing to especially yeah. the amateurs because they're like, yeah. well, do these girls stay stage lean all year round? I say, what are their macros at? They're probably yeah. not eating quite a bit. Are they going on date nights with their husbands? Like you yeah. want to do? week no they aren't mm -hmm. what's being run in the background peds fat burners you have to take all these mm -hmm. things you only see what you see you don't see right. what's, what's happening to get there and you have to find that realistic balance with yourself yep especially like depending on what you want to do like you said like the date nights and stuff for some people they don't need that okay cool awesome right i do i do me too <laughs> i sure do i do i need yeah. my nights off you know like yeah. even now i was like so again, we're going away for my birthday. And I told my husband, I was like, I need an itinerary. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know exactly what we're doing, when we're doing it, so that I can be prepared for it. <laughs> like, so I know how to plan my macros. I know how to plan my workouts. And he literally sent me an itinerary from like the moment we wake up till we go to bed every day. <laughs> love him <laughs> it was so cute i was like i was laughing of course it was like very colorful a different like language like this is our smorgasbord night <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday babe <laughs> no it was super cute i was like oh that's that's awesome so he put a lot of time and effort into just the itinerary like making the itinerary <laughs> alone <laughs> it's your birthday weekend if that's what you asked for that's part of the present <laughs> that's right absolutely absolutely so we're gonna go into relationships and stuff like that but other than that Good segue. I know, right? <laughs> I know. We always do um, that. <laughs> so, and as far as, um, you know, before we go into the relationship stuff, um, so pr other than being exhausted right now, is your prep going well right now too? Yeah, I think so. It's going pretty well. Yeah. yeah. I I'm yeah. still stuck at the same weight, but my body always does this, but I feel yeah. myself getting leaner and tighter. And like I said, when I know I feel like this, mm -hmm. I know change is happening. Yeah. So yeah. that's the only good part about feeling this way is that I just keep relying on if I feel this way, change is happening. If I'm hungry, if I'm tired, if my body's asking for rest, that means I'm pushing. And that's yeah. where we should be right now. We yeah. wanted to push. So all is well. Couldn't, can't, can't complain. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the same spot. Like I'm, you know, I'm a couple weeks behind you as far as prep is concerned, but this was the first week where I started to feel it. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, I dropped two pounds this last week. And now as of today, I dropped another pound. So I'm like I'm finally under the 150 zone. Yes. So like for me, like I typically like in off season, I live around 155 ish, you know, up or down a couple of pounds kind of yep. thing. Um, so now I'm at the, you know, I just broke under 150. So I'm like, okay, awesome. So I still have probably about another 10 pounds or so to go, maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but that's about, that's about right. But again, that's, this, my body is finally saying, okay, we're turned on now. We're going to go. I'm like, all yeah. right. And hopefully it just continues going. Hopefully. That's, yeah. that's always the. That's always the, the caveat. Uh, it's like I see the changes. Like you know, I take videos every week, and like even when I go to the shop gym and I practice at the gym, you know, I like practicing like my progress photos. But then I also like doing it at the gym because you've got the glycogen, you've got the food, you've got the pump yeah. in your body, all that kind of stuff. So you can see it a little bit fuller, a little bit rounder than when you first wake up and you're flat and there's nothing going on. Um, and even that, I can see changes. Like I can see that my you know my waistline's getting tighter, and I can see the skin's get a little bit a little bit uh thinner and things like that more vascularity all that kind of stuff so i'm like okay i'm like it's it's coming it's happening it's coming, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> and you said you like your body later on in the day yes i do so so yep. when you're at the, the gym is when you're really I taking do. those photos and you're like ooh, like you're starting to see like the lines appear mm -hmm. yeah see i'm opposite yes. like myself when i first wake up that's funny <laughs> and well and you're how tall are you five three Okay. So you're, you're definitely on the shorter side. So yes. that's part of it too. Like, because I'm so long, I'm just, I'm just stringy until I get food in me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I just yeah. don't. I, and again, it's, it's the whole feeling of being skinny. I don't like the feeling of being skinny and flat. Yeah. And like bleh. It's like, as soon as I, I get food in me and I get some, get it like pumping through my body, it fills everything out, pops it. And I'm like, Oh, there's my glutes. Oh, there's my shoulders. You there's know, my body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense as far as like the tall to short. Yeah. 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 So, and that's something we, I've had this discussion about too in the past, like as far as peaking for a show and things like that, like 
for somebody my size, it not only takes more food to peak, but it takes more time too. Absolutely. Days. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, it's just, you know, the, I think there was a, it was a, a, is it simile? That's not the word I'm looking for. Analogy. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Sim I was like, simile, right. simile, <laughs> analogy. Do I need to pull up Wikipedia? <laughs> I know, right? Um, analogy of filling up water or a, a bucket. Like if you have a five gallon bucket and you have a 20 gallon bucket, not only is it going to take more water to fill that five gallon or fill the 20 versus the five, but it's also going to take longer time to fill, fill the 20 gallon bucket versus the five gallon bucket. It's a great one. Filling with water. So it's the same thing when you're talking about bodies and size of bodies. If you've got a yes. bigger body, it's going to take more and more time to fill out. Yes. Just is what it is. So, yeah. So, yeah, I tend to do better when we have a, a more like a, a carve up starting like Thursday, Wednesday, start going up into a, into a Saturday show, that kind of thing. So I can just can keep filling out. You know, I actually prefer that, too. Yeah. I like to start carving up like Thursday, Friday and then show day, at least have one big meal or yeah. two. And then I just especially being in the pro league now where the show is so much later. Yeah. I just like feeling that energy. I'm very food dependent on energy or yeah. yeah. Energy. energy dependent on, on food. food. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Here it comes. <laughs> so I've done shows last year, like Tahoe last year when I did it, we had to not eat before that, that show. And I was so like down on stage and yeah. she right after the show, we're like, what's going on with you? And I was like, I haven't eaten. Like oh, I have like yeah. no energy. And they're like, Oh, okay. Well we need to make note of that and make sure yeah. we some things around. We never did that again. And, it's been much better. <laughs> yeah. It's a food thing. And then also for me, it's the, it's the coffee thing too. Like I have to have coffee. Like I know some coaches will cut it the day of the show. No, no. I have to have it. I have no. to have it. I keep yeah. it in for my girls, especially because it keeps them going to the bathroom and mm -hmm. have the energy and never have I had someone have a cup of coffee and they were like, you know, cracked out or anything weird on mm -mm. stage. I try no. to keep that the, the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, in general, and I, I try to tell people this too, like in general, your peak week should be relatively the same. You know, you just increase yes. a little bit of food, you decrease a little bit of water, you know, that kind of thing, but it shouldn't yes. be some crazy crap that I've seen that I've, that I've done. No. I've done. <laughs> it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. And you know, yeah. when, when that was happening, when I wasn't ready and shouldn't yeah. have been on stage, tell people about all the time. There's nothing like this, just like, you know, cr magical thing that happens on peak week. If anything, you should just be cruising right in. If you're making all these manipulations and changes, blah, 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 it probably means you should not be stepping on stage that way. That's right. Yeah. I had a coach one time say that peak week was the week where you can fix all of the things that you screwed up on during your prep. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> now I know that that was very wrong. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all of a sudden you can fix everything in a week that you screwed up on in, you know, 16, 20 weeks, whatever it is. Right. right. So just keeps cheating on your diet every night. And then peak week, we're going to fix all of that. Fix it. All no of it. Worries. There is, we're going to dispel this rumor right now. There is no magical thing at all no. about peak week. Right? No, no, no. You're Zero. resting and chilling. Yeah. That's just cruising. Into yeah. the show. <laughs> and the more manipulation that you do, the worse you're probably going to look. I mean, yeah. At the end Have of you the ever day. seen those bodies that they're on social media and like, wow, they look so great. And they're going to like totally win or like, mm -hmm. I'm worried about that one. And then they show up and you're like, what mm -hmm. happened? Why, why do they, you know, and not, not a, not, this isn't a like, oh, I'm looking at this competitor and I'm like, you know, comparing myself. This is literally their physique change yeah, from changed. A to B. And you're like, what could have possibly happened? That's what happened. Yeah. Some coach manipulated something, went over. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, and, and, you know, there's always things that you can't control. There's always things you could, you know, your cor cortisol could spike or whatever. Menstrual cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Had that happen. <laughs> you know, that's never <laughs> happened to me. <laughs> it did never happen to they me got... until last year. Then it happened twice. <laughs> so really? not wow. that some would. Yeah. It happened to me both. I know. Right. It happened to me at New York and at Dallas, both. Uh, New York. Any of any. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I was like, cause it, it, it hit going into finals um, in New York. <laughs> so I was like, I, I was like, Jamie, I know why <laughs> my stomach hurts so bad. <laughs> And it wasn't even like you woke up with it and had an answer. You just woke up and things were off and yeah. And I thought it was because of the greens that I eaten. Um, I can't remember what it was. I think it had like, I think it, I can't remember what it was. It was like spinach or something. I don't know. I thought it was because of the greens. I thought the greens are what screwed me up and that, that my stomach was all funky because of that. Nope. Cycle. Nope cycle time <laughs> so then we were deciding shows to go to for the next one and i was like well you realize if we pick dallas that is exactly one month from now 
<laughs> so I'm um, like, we have to be careful. And so we go into we go to Dallas and everything's looking fine. I look great on Wednesday. I look <laughs> of course you did. friggin' phenomenal on Wednesday. And then Friday comes in Friday morning. I'm like she's like, oh my god, we nailed it. Or Saturday morning. I'm sorry. When I woke up and I looked great. And then I'm just sitting backstage and I'm like, something's something's wrong. <laughs> Like I'm like my stomach doesn't feel right. Um, I didn't get it during the show. I got it that night. Well, then, thank God. Yeah, I got Could that you night. Imagine? I know. Thank God I didn't get it during the show. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we were out. Like we went out to dinner and then we went out to get to, to drinks and stuff. And I'm sitting at the, sitting at the table. I'm like, I need to go to the bathroom. It makes total sense. <laughs> I was like I was like, oh, that's why I started pulling water so freaking fast. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's funny. What's up with all Jamie's athletes? I won't say the athletes' names. I don't have her permission, but she was having some issues at Tampa Pro and Jamie yeah. said, I can't figure out what the heck's going on. And then the athlete was sitting in the chair for makeup. She yes. laughed and yes. felt Jamie it. told me about that. And then the yeah. funny part about that was she was telling me that story while I was in her room in Nashville. And then I went back to my room and I was like, Jamie, guess what? <laughs> Whoosh. We're spreading all the hormones. I was like... <laughs> That story must have triggered it. Yes. <laughs> I was like, because, hi. <laughs> all the Fit Body girls were all synced up, I guess. I was like, bro, I, I wasn't even in the same room with her. It was just Jamie telling me the story. <laughs> hey, at least we're all healthy getting our periods and shit. I don't know, I don't know. Right? <laughs> Oh Lord, Lord oh, Jesus! Yeah. I was like, just don't come on show day. One I day out of the month. <laughs> I know, and that was the thing. I was like, I did two shows the whole year last year, and they both, both of them. It's like, hmm. yeah, phenomenal. Just your luck. I know. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Speaking of babies, no. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Speaking of lack stuff going on down there and relationships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So let's go into the relationships thing. Oh Lord, our poor husbands, and for other people, their poor, poor boyfriends and girlfriends yeah. and wives and all that kind of stuff. You know, oh my goodness gracious, it's, yeah, it's a tough Just sport. Lifestyle. Yes. <laughs> so they tell me, tell me what brought up this topic, the specific topic for for today for oh, managing relationships. God. Girl, they've been, they, my followers have been asking me for Drew and I to do a YouTube about couples and relationship things for the last year, and we haven't. And every time I do a question box, which I haven't done in a while, I actually did one last week, everybody was like relationship tips or libido things, or, you know, just from our clients, Drew and I coach a lot of husband and wife duos. I have the wife, he has the husband. So he hears, you know, what's going on on one end and I hear what's going on on the other. And a lot of these situations, it's either one is a competitor and one is a lifestyle client, yeah. or it's even more difficult. Both are competitors and trying to navigate that. And so there's a lot of questions and things that have come up from that. So that was the idea for this podcast, what inspired it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that. I'm going to pull up the notes that we talked that you, uh, we're going to go through here today. So so right off the bat, let's just jump into libido and sex drive. Why not? Let's let's just just do it. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's the one on the list. One. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So um, I know that for a lot of women, um, their sex drive takes a big hit when they go into um, into a prep. So um, <laughs> I hate to say it, I'll be honest, it doesn't for me. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I'm just an anomaly, but I don't ever have that problem. Good for you. Give it, Yay, share, share it with all of us. <laughs> I know. Good for right? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but I, but I, so what are some things that, that, you know, does it affect you? What do you do to, to help with that kind of thing for yourself? Yeah. I mean, let me be super honest and transparent. Like Drew and I year one, we've been, we've been together almost 10 years, but Drew and I year one of being married, we almost got a divorce. Mm. Um, my biggest things. I come from a really traumatic background. And one of my things was about sex in our relationship. So when all of this was happening, our first year of marriage, we either were faced with divorce or going to a therapist. So we actually did see a sex therapist. We did a 16 week long course with her and it was absolutely life changing. Like oh, wow. I tell people all the time, like, even if you don't have sex issues, like even just that connection and getting to know your partner was so much more than just sex. Obviously that's, mm -hmm. that's what the whole, it's, it was called an intimacy program. Okay. And so I always go back to that and those tools that I put in my toolbox from that. And so, yes, I get a huge hit to libido. My hormones always get a huge hit in prep. There's just no way around it. So old Jordan, I, I always go like pre, you know, therapy days would have been like very selfish. Like this is the way I feel right now. 
that I'm going off of based off what I feel. Um, obviously we've all heard, or maybe we haven't about the five love languages. So mm -hmm. I think it's starting with, you know, learning your love language, but in this mm -hmm. scenario, understanding your partner's love language is super important. And so even when I don't feel like it, I know that my husband's love language, which is interesting, it's getting different the more he gets older, but it is quality time um, okay. and intimacy. And my husband's famous saying is I'm intimate with my wife when she does things with me that she does not do with anybody else because we are in a service industry, right? Yes. So it's, you know, having those conversations behind closed doors and being intimate and things like that. Like that is true intimacy. Mm -hmm. So understanding my partner and what he, how he receives love is important for me to understand because, you know, let's just be honest, even when I don't feel like doing it, I have to make a sacrifice for my yeah. husband mm -hmm. and for him to feel loved and appreciated because at the end of the day, I'm choosing to do this sport. And yeah. because of that, I'm having some symptoms or backlash from that sport. And I have to choose to show up to my marriage, even though I'm feeling like this. So it's showing up even when you don't feel like it. And a lot of the times it's just kind of that first five to 10 minutes of getting started and yeah. you know, trying and trying to get there and also getting here mentally, you know, however you approach it. If you're like, oh my God, I have to do this, blah, blah. blah. Of course, that's the mindset that you're going to be in. Yes. Try to come with a different free, fresh mindset of I'm coming to my husband because he deserves this. And it's I just like doing him. cardio. You hate the first five to 10 minutes. <laughs> then once you get into it, you're like, okay, you're there. So bad. Yeah, yeah, so it's a bad 10. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I initiate or start that is that's the hardest part is just right. getting there, getting right. to that place when it needs to be done. Right. Well, I think it's like you also said, like, it's also knowing how your partner feels appreciated and things like that too. Simple little things. Like I know for me, and one of the things that my husband loves is when I make the bed, just something simple and stupid like that. But it just shows him that I'm thinking about him. You know what right. I mean? That makes him happy when he gets home and he's like, Oh, she made the bed for me. Oh, it's right. so pretty. It's so clean. Everything's so nice and, and organized. Like little things like that, that knowing what your partner's triggers are that make them happy will get you both into a better place too. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and, and, and doing those things, you know, it only takes freaking five minutes to make the bed, but right. It makes him happy. You know what I mean? Right. So, to make the effort, you know, make the effort. I think a lot of times we get into the sport and a lot of people are very selfish about the, about the sport, which you have to be. Yes. But you need to also remember you're, if you're in a relationship, you can't be selfish all the time. You, you can't. And there's little things that you can do that will be helpful, you know, and understanding what's going to trigger arguments and what's going to trigger in intimacy, you know, things like that. So there's, 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 there's just things, you know, like, yeah. I said, like I was just talking about the little itinerary thing that my husband made for me for our birthday. Like that to me is huge for like my love language because I'm like, oh, he made so much effort. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, that's awesome. You know, yeah. those are things beyond just the sex drive that you can also, you know, incorporate into your relationship. Now I do have a question though. Yeah. You guys went to therapy and everything. Whose idea was that? Was it hard to get the other person on board or were you both like, let's go, let's go do this? You know, how did you, how did you go to that direction? You know, yeah. that, that spot. So, you know, obviously with my background, I've been in a lot of therapy from when I was growing up, but I knew I've, I've seen the same therapist that my entire family has seen, but she would, did not specialize in this. So when all of this was coming up, I went and saw my old therapist for a session and she was like, this is probably something you need to pursue, but you need to go find, you know, someone that specializes in this. Mm -hmm. So I brought this up to Drew and he was 100% on board. I was still resistant. I was mm. scared. I was scared to death. I was about to face demons that were my security blanket. Right. Yeah. And I knew that I ne needed to change, but I was very resistant to that. Um, by the, by the grace of God, I, and it doesn't happen this way ever, the very first therapist that I found was in Tampa. It took 50 minutes for us to get there uh, there and back, so two hours out of our way. And she was the one, first mm. try. And it okay. never happens like this. And I want to be very upfront with, like, therapy and things like that. Like, why people get so turned off by therapy is it should be, like, an interview like everybody else. You're probably not going to find your therapist the first time. You're, okay. you're, you have to interview people to find the person that you connect with that understands what you're going through, that has, you know, experience and things like that. She was it from the jump. 
And I remember us leaving that session, Drew and I talk about it all the time. We were coming back over the Howard Franklin Bridge, which is the main bridge from, from both of these mainlands. And I was crying because she told us about the 16 week program and what it was going to entail. And I was scared and I did oh. not want to go through with it. And I was like, I don't think I can do this. I think we just have to settle on a divorce. And I was in tears. He's like, Jay, just take it week by week. And if at one point, at point you ever want to drop out, we'll drop out. And that's how I approached it. And and Drew literally saved my life. And that's where like a lot of people don't really like understand like our story and like, you know, the, the in-depths about it. And that's where we want to do that YouTube video. But I did, I took it one week at a time. And as it went on, the sessions got more and more and more intense. We would go and we would have like a communication and then we would go home with homework. I'll tell you one of the homework assignments. One of the homework assignments was to open up an anatomy book and to talk your partner through the anatomy and what oh, you wow. like and what you don't like. And your exposed, completely exposed with this anatomy book. Yeah. That's vulnerable. Yeah. But how much I learned from that about what he likes or what he doesn't like, like I would have never asked him those questions. And yeah. these are things that we miss like as an intimacy, but it was, it, it was fantastic. It was a fantastic okay. course. So what kind of advice would you give to somebody if, you know, say they're, they're talking to their partner about going to therapy and one of them is resistant. So what would you tell them to, to say to their partner and say, listen, you know, what would you, how would you get them to push over the hump kind of thing? Honestly, I would go your by yourself first, you mm -hmm. know, show your partner that you, how committed you are in it. And maybe you do the groundwork first to find the right person that you know is going to be good for you, but also for them. Because yeah. if that partner is already resistant and then you bring them into that first session and you know that that's not the person not that I should it. be with, they're automatically going to be turned off. Yeah. So almost do the homework yourself, feel it out, go, keep putting tools in your toolbox, and then just go communicate that at home with your partner. Hey, can we mm -hmm. spend five or 10 minutes to talk about this new therapist or what I learned? You know, and the therapist at one point is going to say, okay, it's time to bring the spouse in and also yeah. give you some, you know, help on how to do that. And just like Drew said to me, commit to one week, just get them to commit to one week. And if they don't want to, that's okay. You you can't force somebody to change that doesn't yeah, want to change. They have right. to be willing to. But if they go, they like the experience. If they get something out of it and you have already communicated to that therapist on the back end what your partner's feeling and their hesitations, they can also honor that and respect that and maybe bring a little bit more light or help that person feel more connected and more comfortable. That's where I would start. Okay. All right. I think that's great advice. I think that's, that's, I think that's great advice. So let's, let's kind of pivot a little bit and let's say um, the real issue is the lack of libido, right? And then yes. not wanting to, not wanting to do it, not because it's not because you don't want to be intimate with your partner, but you just don't want to be intimate period at all. So right. what are some things that you would suggest as far as other than just getting up and doing it and getting started? What are some things like, are there cert certain supplements you can take? Are there, you know, what, what, what do you, what do you suggest? So number one that didn't, was advised or suggested, but did not work for us people put it in their calendars, they schedule it. So some couples say on Wednesday nights, we're going to, you know, you have a rest day, we're going to use your macros and we're going to make a macro friendly recipe at home. And we know on Wednesday nights, we're connecting, yeah. you know, whatever that is. Yep. Um, that doesn't work for us. We figured out scheduling just made it feel super inorganic and it almost resented each works, other. More. It works for us. That's what, that's how we did it. And there you go. So mm -hmm. it's but. completely, but it doesn't work for us. So that's one way. And, mm -hmm. and, and so how many times a week do you guys like schedule that? Is it different every week? Like we schedule it, we schedule it once every week. We schedule okay. it, oh, one date night every week. That's when we, cause the other part you gotta remember, same thing as you and Drew, me and my husband, we work together, you know? Yeah. So everything that we do revolves around work all of that, right? Yeah. So we have one night a week where we say, listen, we're turning everything off. We're not doing anything having to do with the business. We're not doing anything other than that. And this is just our time. Yeah. So, you know, obviously that goes and bleeds into other days and stuff like that too sometimes, but that is our one night a week that we're like, okay, this is us. And that is it. It's Monday. Yes. Mondays for us. Okay. So, so I was going to say like, is it always Mondays? Do you guys mm -hmm. say like on Sundays, we're going to connect in and be like, Hey, mm -hmm. it's day this week. Okay. So you guys have your day and that's, yeah what was one of the suggestions. And again, mm -hmm. that didn't work for us. A second suggestion was a code word or an object. Okay. So let's say that I would like to have sex tonight, 
and I want to communicate that to Drew, who's on prep, but I don't know how they're feeling about it, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's a stuffed animal. And you put okay. that stuffed animal in a specific zone. And if Drew sees that, that animal and he is open to the idea, then he communicates that or initiates. Okay. You know? um, or the word, like a code word or, you know, something of that nature. That didn't work for us either. <laughs> we, like, <laughs> we just like to, like, go with feelings or... Spontaneous. Or- yeah, or just like nonverbal communication, almost just like we like to initiate and show each other that we we want to. Um, that was one of my things in the beginning. Is like I didn't want to initiate. I was like, you come to yeah. me always, all the time, which yeah. was was bad yeah. um, because I would never I, go to him. I don't, that, I, don't, I don't have that problem. <laughs> right? <laughs> Teach me your ways, girl. I mean, I'm. I'm like that with everything in life, though. If there's something that I want, I go after it. I'm like, okay, this is what's happening. <laughs> just so you know this is what's happening yeah. that's how that's how i'm with everything though that, and again you know, it goes back to that's just how i am but that's how i am with everything else in my life which is why it was so hard for drew to be like this is how you do approach yeah. everything else in your life why do you not approach that with me and i'm like mental block mm. <laughs> so now we've we've got it figured out but it's it those that those were like the the suggestions that were like given to us from therapy and and it's funny because what didn't work for us works exactly right for you yeah. guys and mm-hmm. there's no perfect formula i think it's just finding out what works for you guys it works. verbal nonverbal throwing something out scheduling it not scheduling it but you need to have that communication with your partner no matter what so you guys know what to expect and what's on the same page every week yeah yeah. Now here's, um, you know, this is something that I heard recently and I didn't even realize this. I just take the, I take DHA because that's what I was told to take for hormonal balance. Um, so I heard something where that, that helps with, uh, with libido, with sex drive and stuff like that in women too. So do you, is that right? I don't even know, to be honest with D-H-E-A you. D-H-E-A is like a, um, all natural. It helps bring up testosterone. Testosterone, yeah. mm-hmm. testosterone is raised. Yeah, that makes sense. Libido. Absolutely. Yeah. So testosterone is what causes, uh, low libido, uh, sex yep. hormone in general, the leaner that we get, especially as women, women are not supposed to be 10% body fat or less. We are literally fighting our body's natural way of having babies and hormones, Mm -hmm. body fat and wide hips. We are going against all of this. So as body fat continues to go down, as food and cardio continue to change, it, this is a natural ha- phenomenon that your sex hormones are going to bottom out. And mm-hmm. because of that, libido does start to begin to suffer unless you're someone like Sean who can, continues to keep it on your <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Give us some. Give us some. I, know. I say it all the time that I'm like a freaking teenage boy sometimes. I don't know what's wrong with me. No, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's empowering. I wish I, wish I was like that. Oh, my God. But a lot of it, listen. I'll also say this, a lot of it has come with maturity, a lot of it has come with confidence, a lot of it has come with just just knowing myself, knowing my body, knowing, um, being comfortable with my body and things like that too. Like I know when I was younger, I was not as confident in my own skin as I am now. I was still had a, I still had a high sex drive. I've, I've always had a high sex drive. I just have, but it's different now. Like yeah. it's just, it's just, I, it, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but like, no, I guess I was... I'm like, I guess I was pretty aggressive when I was younger too. I'm like, never mind. I don't even know. I'm like, I'm, I'm like turning like 10 shades of red right now. I yeah. know. She's speechless. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Man, uh, maybe you should write a book. I don't I know. I know, right? I'm like, I need to be like the next Carrie Brad- Bradshaw. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Not the married version. I know, right? The True. Right. married version. True. There is no Mr. Big in this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. But yeah, like, and it's, it's, and it, again, sometimes I feel like I'm an anomaly too, because I do talk to a lot of girls and they have this problem. And I'm just like, for me, it's like, I, I listen to what they have to say because, you know, I want to, I want to understand where they're coming from. Um, and then I also kind of want to understand and communicate to them where their husbands and boyfriends may be coming from too, and how they need to feel that from them. And, yes. you know, cause, cause honestly, as a posing coach, I don't do the, the stuff that you do, but because of that, sometimes the girls come and talk to me about stuff that they won't talk to anybody else about. Cause I'm not going to yes. judge them on their food. I'm not going to judge them on their training. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I'm not a and part of all of that. Correct. Yes. Right. So a lot of times when they come and talk to me, it's more like therapy than anything else, you know, yeah. Oop, smacking my mic. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> and so they'll tell me things that they won't tell anybody else. Right. So 
you know, I, I have like that unique perspective of standing back and saying like, okay, if I was your partner, this is how I would feel about all of that right now. You know what I mean? Like I would feel like you, like you didn't care about me. That's what I would feel like, you know? Yeah. So yeah. like we've just been talking about, like you've got to find ways to make your partner understand that you're doing your best that you do care about them, you know? And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have sex every night, but it does mean that you have to do things like make the bed. <laughs> intimacy. <laughs> you know, that's intimacy. That's yeah. showing your partner that you care about them in one way or another, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes just little things like that, you know, making coffee in the morning for them, whatever it might be. You know, my husband makes me coffee every morning. Yes. That's, that's like, he like, he won't let me make me make my coffee. He has to make it for me. That's like his thing, you know, stuff like that, that shows you that your partner, that you care about your partner, yeah. you know? So when you get into those, those deep zones where you just can't turn it on, you can't turn that sex drive on and you just can't do it. You got to find other ways. You got to yeah. find other ways. Cause what, what's going to happen at the end of the day is your partner's no longer going to be supportive of you being in the sport. So you're going to have to make a decision between being a competitor or being a wife or a girlfriend or whatever. You're going to have to make that decision. Yeah. And nobody wants to be put in that one. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you could just take the 10 to 15% of the intensity that you give to your prep every day and put that to your relationship. Right. This is a much easier topic. That's and right. just like you're saying, you know, if, if Dan stopped making you coffee every morning, you'd be like, What's going on? What's going on, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way, if you stop, even, you know, J Drew said to me a couple of preps ago, you stopped looking at me and mm. smiling at me and just mm -hmm. like randomly kissing me. And I was like, oh my God, he's totally right. Like, yeah. I don't have to look at him. Yep. I'm just so focused on my prep and what I've done. Like, I haven't even looked at him lately. Yep. My, mind you, not kissing. In, like, that's just where we just go into that robot mode. And so where we need to meet them halfway, but also in the same token, when we're close to stage two or three weeks out, maybe they need to meet us halfway yep. and understand like, hey, listen, there's nothing that's going to be going on, but that still doesn't mean you can't smile at me from across the room and give me a kiss every once in a while. Right. That's where you guys just have to have that open line of communication and meet each other in the middle because you're absolutely right, Sean. The last thing you want is for that partner to give you that ultimatum. And then you have to pick between a hobby and sport that you love yep. and your relationship. I mean, obviously, we're all going to pick our or should pick our relationship hands down every time, but it shouldn't have to even get to that. Point. Right. Well, you should as long as everybody's on the same page with that. Correct. You know what I mean? There's 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 definitely extenuating circumstances where yes. it leads into something else. and it's, it's actually about something else. It's not about prep itself. So. Right. <clears throat> That's a whole other topic. <laughs> yes. But 100%. With that, I mean, going into that, you know, how do you how to deal with a, a partner that is supportive or is not supportive of you competing? Um, I know for myself, uh, one of the good things about my husband is that he was a high level wrestler for his whole his entire um, high school, college career, all that kind of stuff, like really high level wrestler. So he understands the dedication that it takes to be to excel at a sport. You know, yeah. and wrestlers, oh, they do, although they don't do bodybuilding diets, they starve themselves. <laughs> it's it's so, actually it's very similar. It's, it's very it similar. It's very, it's similar. very, very similar. He actually did a couple of bodybuilding shows when he was a teenager because he worked in a gym and, you know, he's a wrestler and all the guys were like, you're in shape enough to do bodybuilding. Go do it. So like he even told me about he was 18 and he prepped for the show for two weeks and he showed up. He had just tanned on the beach like he didn't even have a tan on. <laughs> And he won it. He won the whole thing. He won the whole wow. show. He was, he was Mr. Teenage Virginia in like 1982 or something, something like that. <laughs> literally a shotgun prep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally. Because he just he just worked in a gym and all the guys were like, you should just go do this. So he didn't know what he was doing. He, but yeah, he freaking won the whole show. But he's and, had and, that experience. Yeah. And back then, I mean, bodybuilding was big back then. It was like, he's like, there was like, I don't know, close to 20 guys in his class or something like that. So That's huge. Yeah. But anyway, I digress. Wow. So... <laughs> So my point is, is that he understands the kind of dedication it takes in order to be a really high level athlete. He gets it. So, you know, he's done the preps himself before. Back in 2012, he did a prep with me. So he did men's physique back then. Cool. Um, so he told me he would never do it again because he doesn't want to do the diet ever again. <laughs> he, can, he trains every day. He trains just Trust. like I do. He okay. train, He still trains to this day, just, just like he, like if he wanted to do a show, he could, but he just doesn't want to do the diet. And um, so you know, having somebody that understands what you're going through and understands that is a great thing, but that doesn't happen a lot. <laughs> so the first thing I, I, I think that's on the, on that, um, 
I guess, to-do list is to communicate, again, communicate with your partner what it is you're doing and why you're doing it and kind of try to explain to them why you're dieting the way that you are, that you're not hurting yourself. Cause we know all everybody in our lives are like, you're getting too skinny. You know, what are you, you're, you're, you're wasting away, blah, 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 stuff like that. So just even communicating and, and explaining the sport to your significant other is a big deal. Um, trying to help them understand where you're coming from and why you want to do this. That's a big thing too. A lot of times people go into this and don't have, actually have a why behind the, behind why they're actually doing all of this. And when their significant other is seeing the results in a not positive way towards them, they're going to be less supportive. And if you don't have a good reason for it, then why are you doing this? You know what I mean? So um, I would say one of the biggest things to be doing as you're getting into this is again, the open lines of communication and telling your partner, like, this is what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And if they have questions about it, answer it as best they can, you know, involve them in the process. Don't, don't be selfish and keep it to yourself and be like, no, this is my thing, not yours. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, that, that is one way to have to create kind of an understanding between you and your partner. Um, what else, what do you think that is a good way to involve your partner in something like this if they're not involved in it? No, I think that was, that was really great is just communicating that and also communicating to them expectations of what the process is going to look like. Cause you have to think when you go, this is what I see come up a lot. Okay. With health and fitness, a lot of the times as women, we have done yo-yo dieting, right? We go on this thing, then we come off, we go on this one, and then we come off. Now we're keto and now we're something else. And so when you're starting a bodybuilding journey, whether you're going to be involved with it for two months, six months, four years, whatever the case may be, your partner might be a little hesitant at yeah. first because you've tried so many things. And is this just going to be another thing? But now not only are you trying something new, now it's affecting their life, right? Because you have to be so strict. So now we're not going out to dinners twice to three times a week. Their eating habits are changing because your eating habits are changing. Their time or their schedule is changing because now yours is changing. And so we have to realize that even though they are not doing the work, their life is being They're affected. So in it. Yep. Yeah. And you have to give almost that notice of what is this going to entail and be brutally honest so that mm -hmm. there is 100% expectations and let your partner give feedback and be able to say, okay, but I'm worried about X, Y, Z yeah. and allow them to have that open line of communication and also be able to keep that door open of saying, if something comes up and you're uncomfortable or you're mad or something in this process is not making you feel loved or respected, or you're not liking something, let's talk about it when that happens. So we can connect and try to find a meeting spot. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. where people go wrong is they don't, and then they just keep building up these resentment walls until the wall is way too high and it gets entirely too late. Yeah. And it, that's the biggest thing, I think, is keeping the communication open more than anything else. Yep. And then, it, you know, a lot of times this will bring up other insecurities, not just in the relationship, but, just, but in your partner as well. So, you know, I, I hear this a lot where, you know, husbands don't want their wives on stage because they don't want their wives being looked at by other people in a bikini and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. The wives have a hard time then because, you know, part of them is like, I really want to do this for me, but I don't, also don't want to upset my husband. Um, you know, this isn't about what he thinks it's about. It's not about me parading around in a bikini so other people can watch me. It's about me creating this achievement, things like that. So how would you, how would you tell them to get through a hurdle like that? Like, how would you, how would you have the wife communicate to the husband that this isn't about me just showing off? You know what I mean? What, what yeah. would you say? Um, Drew and I, before we we're separate coaching. We had our own team and we coached together and we had a husband and wife duo and the husband started competing or wanting to compete, but obviously he's a guy and he bare off the street wanted to start competing. So he knew he had several years of building to do. Well, the wife comes in and she's within striking distance of wanting to do a show. So she starts prepping and she's actually on stage much, much earlier than him. And through the entire process, it was that battle of like, you know, the husband is saying, this was my thing first. Now it's her thing. And I don't want her on stage because I don't want people looking, you know, and we, we dealt with everything that you just said. And to be honest with you, there was really not a really great outcome. She got on stage. She did great. She loved it. I still remember her smile to this day when she come off stage and how happy she was. And that was it. She was done after that. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's what worked for them and their marriage. I'm sure there was a lot of conversations and things like that. You know, I don't really have the right answer for that. Right. You know, I think that it's it's just a lot of communication that has to happen and not one size fits all. I will say too, I think my biggest fear, you know, is that for me, when I came into my marriage, I was a completely different person. And this was many years before bodybuilding. And when I found bodybuilding, I changed and grew so much, but mm-hmm. I grew to a better version of myself. And so did my husband, where a lot of the times, especially if only one partner is involved, that one partner is growing and flourishing and becoming the best version of themselves where maybe the other partner isn't growing. So they're kind of getting left behind. And now the dynamic of their marriage is changing. And that's an even scarier place to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, do you encourage your partner to find their own journey? Or now you just two completely different people? Like, what does that look like? But that's a tough one. So there's there's a theory that there's two types of people. There's campers and there's climbers, right? So the climbers always want to be doing something better. They always want to be better than themselves. They always want to be doing this, you know, getting better, 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 better. Campers like to be where they are. Comfortable. Yeah. They don't like to change. They don't like to grow. And there's nothing wrong with either type. No. There's nothing wrong with either type. But when the two of them are together, they don't fit. Correct. Because one is always wanting to ascend and the other one is always trying to stay level. In the same. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times when you get into a sport like this, you find out real quickly that one of one of you is a, is a climber and one of you is a camper. And unfortunately, in that situation, it's not the bodybuilding thing that's the problem. It's who you are as a person, you know. And again, it's not that one is better than the other. It's that you just don't mesh together. well, Right. Right. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's, there's people that just that, you know, I, I liken this to, they just want to have the nine to five job. They want to have the the kids and the white picket fence and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. You know, but that's not going to be the person that's going to be linked up with somebody who wants to go, you know, freaking make a million dollars in the stock market. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, they're two different types of people. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of times when one person gets into this sport and gets that bug of wanting to be better, that'll that'll just show them their true colors kind of thing. Yeah. And you're involved in a sport where you are constantly climbing a ladder. I mean, That's even the whole point Olympian, behind it. you are still climbing a ladder. Like there's mm-hmm. an ending journey here and that's what feeds the climber, but yep. it really intimidates the camper. That's I right. I love that analogy, by the way, I'm going to take that. <laughs> well, I can't, take credit. I can't take credit for that. That is one of my <laughs> husband's deals. Like he, that I don't know where he got it from. I'm sure he got it from somebody else too, but there's campers and climbers. That's we're going to, we're going to coin that. <laughs> I really like. There we go. <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's the scarier place to be because that's where you really need to look. Just like you're saying, this is beyond bodybuilding at that yep. point. This is more of your marriage and that's what's right. going on internally and behind closed doors. And you have to make the, the choice on, are you going to keep climbing? Are you going to keep camping? Are you going to be a camper? You know, and, and that's, that's where decisions are made. Right. Well, that, that's the thing. It's like, you know, sometimes when you get into not, it's not even just bodybuilding, but when you get into a situation that again, brings out your true colors and who you actually are, you have to start making some decisions. You know, I I see a lot of times that, you know, this goes beyond just a partner not supporting you in the sport, but they become, you know, mentally abusive, that kind of thing too. And when it gets to a certain point, it's not okay anymore. Like there, there, you definitely have to compromise for your partner when you're in prep, but there are certain things that they should never say to you, that they should never do to you, that they should never make you feel a certain way. And if that's happening, then it goes way beyond just being in a prep, way beyond just being in the sport. It's, it's a much deeper issue that needs to be addressed. Um, and sometimes it does, it does end up being that it's just time for you to move on. Yeah. When it's yeah. becoming hurtful. Absolutely. And I, and I have experience too. I don't know these husbands nor would I ever want to know them, but I've had clients where I, I hear in their check-ins what their husbands are saying to yeah. them. And there's definitely a fine line of harmful yeah, hurtful, and constructive. Yes. And, and there's sometimes just very harmful and hurtful things that are said. Yes. Um, it's funny that you brought that up as my very first prep. I had so many people come up to me and were like, oh my gosh, you have diet face. You look like a skeleton. And I was so offended, mm-hmm. so offended. Um, so you got to kind of have to learn how to get thick skin of things yep. like that. That's one thing. But when 
your partner, your husband, your spouse, whoever that is, is in your, that's in your corner. And if they're seeing more things like hurtful and harmful, like you don't look good or I hit yeah. you, ugh, that's just something that, yeah, you got to yeah. kind of step outside of and say, this is something else. Mm -hmm. And what are we going to do about that? And it goes on the other side of that too. I've heard of, of women where their, their partners don't like it when they start gaining weight in off season. You know, it's not just the diet and things like that, but they don't like when they're starting to get a little thicker. They're like, no, no, it's, you know, and, it, and it's, it's again, hurtful and harmful language, and it's, you it know, is. it's, it's not, it's not like, you know, and my husband would be honest. Like he likes me better when I'm in my off season. I do too. I like so does my off season too. Like so I like true. the curves. It just yeah. is what it is, you know? Yeah. Um, but he's not going to sit there and tell me I look like shit. You know what I mean? Like he's not going to do that. Yeah. He never would do that. He's like, I think he, every, every day he'll say you're the most beautiful woman in the world, no matter what weight I am, no matter, no matter if I'm bloated or whatever, he doesn't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. He likes the curves better. So do I, Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's not gonna, he's not gonna sit there and say, I look like shit no. when, I'm, when I'm lean. You know what I mean? Like he understands that I'm doing this for a reason that I'm doing this because I want to accomplish a goal and things like that. You know what I mean? So he's supportive of it regardless. And he's always said, he's like, as long as you're not hurting yourself, do Go whatever makes you happy. Yeah. And, and whatever makes you happy. situations are temporary. Yeah, absolutely. You're temporarily you're in, you're in off season temp. They're both temporary yep. I want them to be yep. um yeah and i think it's you know just like you said my husband too he doesn't want true true off season weight like you overdid it weight he likes me about 10 pounds up from my stage weight he thinks that when i'm stage lean he's like you are so intimidating like it's like That's i don't even so know funny. Like, like do i even like touch you am i gonna break you <laughs> <laughs> well my, my husband is spanish so you know they like curves so curves. My, so my husband's like more is better <laughs> yeah well, he's like more, 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 more fun too. I mean, it's not. He's like it's, it's, it's softer and bouncier. <laughs> That's what I like. I don't know. Like, let's just go right. Like intimacy wise, like it's yeah. it hurts sometimes. Yeah. Like when yeah. you're this lean, like yeah. so, like sometimes like like we tell I told you I'm like I don't know if that felt good. Or it hurt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's no there's no cushion left yeah it's like it's like when you're sitting on a plane and your ass hurts so bad but you have a bony butt like it's the same absolutely thing. so absolutely. it's yeah yep. but so i like a little curve too i like a little a little cushion for the pushing absolutely. that's what it's for <laughs> absolutely man i mean again that's what we were that's what that's how god made us right. <laughs> you know we're supposed to be like that it just that's we're supposed to be like that yeah. We're not supposed to be stage lean. We're not supposed to be. No. no. Which is why it's a challenge, which is why we like doing it, which is why we put ourselves through this because we want to be able to say we could do it, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, all, all those things go into play. And again, your, your partner needs to understand that they, that you're in a very vulnerable state too, you know? And I'll never forget. My husband still brings this up. So it was, it was when I was in off season and we were, it, he, again, he still, trains and diets and all stuff like I do. So we were taking body, he, he took his body fat all the time. So with the calipers and all that kind of stuff. So he's like, he was let me serious. Take, yeah, he was like, let me take your body fat. I was like, okay. So he took my body fat and, and it was like with the calipers and all this stuff, it was like, I don't know, it was like 23% or something like that. Of course. I was like, I'm like, I'm obese. <laughs> and of course, of typical course, male. measurements, I'm obese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I Thanks. was like, he's like, I'll never do that again. <laughs> No, no, and you a won't. typical male, right? He's like 10% without yeah. even trying. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's something else too that comes up a lot when couples are prepping together. Obviously the guys have it so much, they do. They just have it so they much do. easier. The, uh, let's just be honest and transparent. Their drugs are higher yeah. or they just drop body fat faster. Males just, their bodies are are suited for this sport versus us. And so, especially couples that prep together, a lot of the times, like they see the husband that is doing so much better or responding mm -hmm. so much better. They're not doing anything more than you, unless you're not following your diet. That's right. another thing. Let's say both of you are running the same race. You can't resent your husband for that. No. That's he's just following his plan. And that's the way it is. It's harder for women. And you just have to, just like you're saying, this is why we love it. We, mm -hmm. none of us would love this sport. If it was just like, Oh, this is easy. That's there's no challenge in that. No. Like, so as women for us to get lean, you should be even more proud when you step on stage that day, because it took you so much longer to get that fight, but don't be mad at your husband for their journey because <laughs> right. they're just following their plan. And that's how, that's how their body 
naturally responds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a, you know, that brings up another, um, another point. So what if you go into a show and you do a show with your husband or your boyfriend or whatever, which I did, I did a show with my husband. Um, and what if one of you places better than the other one? Yeah. What do you uh, do? So like Drew and I have competed twice now together. Mm -hmm. And after the second time, first time we were like, we don't really like that. Let's try it one more time. And we were like, never again. But it wasn't because of the placing. It was just because like, he likes to be so involved with me. And then I like to be so involved with him. And I wanted to see him and I whatever. So it was just too stressful. However, right, placings. Yeah, you ha I think it goes back to kind of our last podcast about managing expectations. Yeah. Your husband's journey is completely different from yours, apart from the fact that he's a male and a completely different category and you are a female and a complete, it all depends on who shows up that day and are mm -hmm. you bringing your best? And that's the only thing that they can control. So mm -hmm. yes, you, you just got to manage those expectations for sure. We did one show together and same thing. I said, we'd never do another show together, but I didn't mind the prep together. I liked prepping because we would do Me cardio too. together and things like Me too. that. But the day of the show, I mean, I did his, I did his tan, I did his makeup, I did all that stuff for him. Like I did his posing for him, everything. So I focused on him more than I did on me. Right. And, you know, which wasn't a problem, but I ended up actually doing very well that show. And I, you know, I, I placed really well. It was actually a really competitive class and I was very happy. Um, this was when Men's Physique first started and they didn't look anything like they look today. And they were <laughs> actually, um, they're actually penalizing for over muscularity and oh wow I'm yeah looking where we're at <laughs> yeah i know and so you know just a, an idea of of what we're talking about my husband is six foot two and on stage he was 192 pounds so he wasn't a big guy on stage no and they told him he should have done bodybuilding <laughs> so, wow meanwhile there were guys that like so in his class there were six in his class and took six and they told him it was because he was too muscular. He was too, he was too big is what they told him. Wow. And there were guys that were in his class that literally, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. There's pictures of this. There were guys in his class with like rolls over their shorts, like fat rolls over their shorts. And I kid you not, I kid you not. There was a national judge on the panel and came up to him in the bathroom and was like, listen, if you were at any other show, he's like, you would have won the whole thing. He goes, but we have to go by the head judge. The head judge of that show was no longer even involved in the NPC and IFBB. He was kind of kicked out. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, well, he's like, and he was like, listen, if you were at any other show, you would have won it. He goes, but so-and-so has, has specific ideas of what this should look like. And that's just not what it should look like. So. Well, so maybe that. <laughs> oh, okay, I was gonna say maybe that made him feel better. Yeah, I'm not he sure. Pissed. He was okay. pissed, and like so, he was in the tall class, and there was a, there was a short class too. And the, again, the guy with the most muscle in the short class took last. And today, in today's world, he wouldn't have even been close to the amount of muscularity that that they're rewarding, like on the pro level now. Wow. And the, that, but that kid, like my husband, was older at the time. He was 47 at the time, and the kid oh. was like, you know, the kid was in his 20s or something. Mm. And so he was really upset. The kid that took second took last was really upset in his short class and it is, <laughs> it is short class. Was in backstage, he's like it's okay man they obviously don't want muscle here <laughs> all, the other, all the other guys backstage were like i love it because <laughs> the poor kid he looked great he looked phenomenal and like yeah. in today's world like he actually had a really good build for men's physique he just needed to be if, if it was today's standard he would have needed to be better conditioned but yeah. as far as shape and muscularity and things like that he was he would have been he would have done well at a local level show you know interesting um but it was just that's just what it was back then that's when that's when men's physique, men's physique was just starting so they just didn't have this standard the bubbliness the, the bit no, yeah the muscle yeah. No, and I was just like, you know, so again, it was one of those things where we got out of the show. My husband was pissed. Like, he hates losing. Absolutely hates losing. Hates, hates. He's super competitive. Okay. Super competitive. Okay. So uh, that was a, that was, was not a fun night. <laughs> got it. <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, I'm never doing this again. He doesn't. He also doesn't like to be in a in a in a sport where his effort is not rewarded. It's rewarded on, on such sub subjectivity, right? Yeah. So like being a wrestler, he's like, you know, be, as a wrestler, we are always taught that you don't leave the mat or the match up to the official official um, <laughs> to make the decision. You, you don't leave it up to them to make the decision because then you don't have it in your control. He's like, as a wrestler, you need to win on the mat, you know? So being in this sport- Can't do that in this sport. No, in this sport, you are 
at the subjectivity level of the judges, and that's that is what it is. So he just, he just no, he's like, no. <laughs> no, he's like, no, he's like, no, yeah, can't, no, no, not gonna do this. Is that funny? Drew comes from the background <laughs> of um, racing NASCAR, actually. Oh, okay. So I can totally see that. That's funny that you say that. I can totally see that. Yeah. Joe, Joe Pischkula has a, um, Joe Pischkula, he's the promoter for all the class shows. Mm -hmm. He's purchasing all of Drew's autograph cards right now. They're all over oh. like eBay and stuff. He, he, he has a mission to buy like every single one on the internet. And I think he's doing it. I'm just oh, like wow. imagining walking into check-ins at the class show one day and they're going to be like all over the walls or something to embarrass you. <laughs> I anyway, love it. But it was, he came from a very similar background, obviously like First is first. Like if you're on the pole, you're on the pole. Like, and so he has a not first or last. That he says that all the time. That's yep. exactly what he says. Yep. So I'm sure that comes from a movie or something Ricky that Bobby I from, there yeah. you go. Uh -huh. yeah, I was gonna yep. say I don't watch those movies, so <laughs> oh my god, it's Will Ferrell. I watch all those I, movies. I, I know, know all those movies by heart. I can sit here and recite them to you. I'm like not a movie person. Everybody's like, Have you watched this movie? I'm like, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am. I totally am. Especially especially stupid comedies, Will Ferrell, things like that. Adam Sandler, any, any of them. Yeah. I, I yeah. Know, you're I know in all my heart. I know all of them by heart. <laughs> Step Brothers is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I have to watch that. I have watched yeah. that. I love that one. <laughs> yep. I'm not total. I'm not a total living under. <laughs> uh, Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers. Another I have one. Too. Yes. There we go. Okay. We're see, good. Usually we're I'm like, no, no, no. You're, so you're giving me all good classics. Thank you. Thank you. You're letting me off easy. <laughs> those are, those are all movies I've seen a thousand times. That one and what, old school is another one. Um, I haven't seen that. You know what movie is so stupid? But I could watch it over and over again. Um, what's the one Bachelorette, where the oh all the yeah, girls yeah, are yeah. the one uh, girl getting the it's, it's a bridesmaid bridesmaid yes, yes. bridesmaid yes I, I, I yeah, agree absolutely agree one. and you know it's funny and I'm gonna, this is gonna sound terrible but I don't really like female stand up comics at all like the, I don't think they're funny I think that male stand up comics are hilarious yes it's very rare that I think a woman is funny when she's doing stand up I just don't interesting. And, but I love Bridesmaids. That is one of I, I love that movie. It's freaking that's like one of my all-time favorite yeah. movies. Uh huh. Yep. I don't one. have a lot, but that's yeah. Cool. That one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I do. Sorry, I know, I know most. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like I don't remember what we were talking about. But. <laughs> we were talking about how Dan said no to competing because it's not yes, just yes, cut yes. dry. It's not. And then okay, and then and then we're on NASCAR. We we're on NASCAR. Yes. Okay. So you were, what were you saying about Drew with NASCAR? Well, just that it's the same as far as wrestling yes. goes, right? It's yeah. like the winner is the winner. There's, you know, and this Drew actually adapted very well to bodybuilding. He, he likes the challenge more of yeah. who's winning, who's not, you know, that we show up our best. You know, he likes yeah. that adrenaline rush and I don't know. I, I hate it. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I wish it was more cut and dry, but it's not. I know. I wish it was more cut and dry too, honestly, because I don't yeah. like that part either. I yeah. Don't like the, I don't like the the anticipation part of it at all yeah so, but is that why we love it is that another reason why we love it so much i don't know because we haven't seen no. anything different but mm -hmm. i know yeah. yeah yeah well i mean you just gotta find what works for you. and again like my it cracks me up so this is another good story so you know i was talking about they opened up a planet fitness down the street right so when they open, I got a membership there with your black card membership. You can bring a guest with you anytime you go. Right. So Dan would come with me um, a couple times a week. He would come with me to the gym. So he's like, I'm going to get my own membership. I was like, okay, cool. So he gets his own membership so he can go whenever he wants to go. And he has not been back since because he started like, he, we have a shack. He calls it the shack. So we have a, ha a shed in the back of our, in our backyard. And he started filling that with gym equipment. So he's got like a bench back there. He's got, you know, put tricep push down thing, all the stuff, you know, but dumbbells, all that kind of stuff back there. So he works out in the shack in the back of our house. Instead of going to Planet Fitness, he after doesn't he pay for the membership. Yes, after he bought the membership. I know. I was like, can you just go once? So that can, you know, use it and then cancel it. Yeah, right. I know. I was like, can you just go once? I'm like, you literally, like, and that was the funniest part about the whole thing is like, he used to go with me all the time because I could bring a guest. And then as soon as you buy your own membership, you don't use it. Done. <laughs> okay whatever <laughs> usually it's like the purchase motivation theory like if i buy right. the tennis shoes i'm gonna use the tennis shoes Dan's Absolutely. just beating his own drum he's like no i'm paying for it but i'm not gonna. <laughs> he's gonna the go. best client he's the one that pays every month on time but doesn't show up and take space at the gym that's right he's, <laughs> he's, he's doing it he's doing it for you he's exactly doing it for you. <laughs> he's doing it for all of us thanks dan <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh. Plan to miss too. I know. Well, he's like, and it's like, the, he always talks about it being like the old school wrestling because there's no, it's a, it's a shed in the back, in her backyard. There's no AC. There's no nothing. He's got a fan back there. You know what I mean? Like, and he's like, he's he, he's all, yeah, he's like, he's like, I feel like I'm Rocky. Like, <laughs> I'm like all right. Yeah, literally. Like, and he, like, he does his cardio up and down our driveway. Like, that's what he does. He goes up and down our driveway. Our driveway is really steep. So, I, I, really, yeah. Yeah. So it really, it really is good cardio. I've done it myself. Um, is but, that when you're on the porch and you're drinking your coffee? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much. That's my man. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was funny. I can't remember what I, I posted something uh, where he was outside with the dogs or something like that. One of my girlfriends was like, oh, I didn't realize Dan had some pipes on him. <laughs> I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> like so what are we talking about <laughs> i know right which part sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh lord but yeah 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 so i mean you know everybody finds their finds their thing you know and i think that's part of it too like in a relation could bring you back to our topic in a relationship is um you each have to find a way to embrace it you know what i mean like like maybe their thing isn't to be a bodybuilder, you know, but maybe they want to do CrossFit or something like that. So you guys both have a goal. That's a, that's an, that's a, that's a, something you can go after. You know, I think that's a good way to do it too. I do. I, I think that too. You know, the one that it's usually the wife that signs up for the show and then the husband's like, well, now what me, you know, and yeah. maybe they sign up for something or you encourage them to do something, a CrossFit sh uh, show or yeah, something. Yeah. I also have a hu husband and wife duos that the wife is like actually prepping and the husband is prepping, but he's not going to step on stage. They're going to yeah. do a photo shoot together yeah. around the same weekend of the wife show, which is great because now they're both kind of going towards something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just about that communication. And just because you do something does not mean that your husband's all on board or right. maybe they want to be involved and you're not really communicating or inviting them yeah. to be involved. And they want to feel like you want them a part of the process or that invite. That's yeah. a really good point. Yeah. And then, you know, just, I think it's also a, a growing experience as you go through it. You're going to find out what works best for you guys and how you can manage it together too. As long as you keep that communication open. Like we've talked about before, like I like to go to shows when I'm competing by myself, you know, some, some other couples, like they have to be together all the time, you know? Yeah. You've got to fi figure out what works for you in that scenario too. Because I mean, honestly, if, if my husband was on top of me at shows, I would go crazy. Right. But for other couples, like they need to have their significant significant other there to help them. You know Correct. what I mean? So to feel that support. Mm -hmm. That's right. So you got to figure out that as you go along too. And sometimes that takes a learning learning curve too. You do a few things and they don't work out all that great, and you realize, okay, we got to do this a little differently. Um, but again, keeping that communication open so that you can change it a little bit, tweak it a little bit, till you find what works as your chemistry and your flow. Definitely. Yeah. And competing has only made, like I said, made me a better individual. Yeah. And I found so much of my confidence and myself and my self-worth through competing. So that it only has made me as Jordan Brandon an individual so much better. And because Same. of that has made my marriage so much better. Absolutely. Same. So it can, it can definitely enhance your life if it's done the right way, but it's all mm -hmm. about just finding the ways to make it enhance your life and not be your kryptonite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a good place to stop for that conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of questions come in. So yes. um, let's just pick three. I know you pulled out some like um, rapid fire questions. Do you want to just go, we could run through a few of those. You want to do that? I've got, I could, I mean, the next, next time we could pull up some more of these questions. Um, yeah. You want to do the rapid fire? Yeah, let's do that. Let's, okay, let's ready? Go run go through them. You. I'm going to go to you. Okay. Ready? Okay. Macros or meal plan? Macros. What about D you? I am macros off season, meal plan in season. Okay. All right. So, are we, are we, so with these rapid fire, are we just saying our answers and are we explaining? We, can, we can explain them. Okay. All right. I've done both. I've done both macros and meal plans. So, but you prefer macros. I prefer macros. I yeah. prefer macros hands down, like yeah. all the time, but yeah. you know, I just, so, go better but with life. the caveat of like when I'm in prep, um, it basically is a meal plan. Like exactly. I, I eat almost the exact same thing every single day. You know what I mean? Like, um, and I was saying, I'm like, even when I get back from this whole thing for my birthday, you know, I'm going to sit down and, you know, plot out my everything, every little thing, you know, my water, my sodium, my, my food, everything. Cause at that point I'll be, you know, going down seven weeks out. So I need to know exactly what's going to dial on. it in. 
Right. So like, you, like I, that's kind of how I, how I work it. Like when I get into that, like eight, nine weeks out, that's when I start tightening things, tightening things up a little bit more and a little bit more as we go. Cause you just want less and less variables. That's all. That's what, that's where I'm at. So yeah, it's within my macros, but I create my own meal plan. So yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Tanning. DIY, we've already talked about this, but yeah. we'll talk about it again. DIY or spray tan? Spray tan for sure. With spray the exception that I, I do DIY going into the show. So right. meaning I start the DIY on Wednesday if I have a Saturday show. Is that right? Yeah, you know, Thursday. I start on Thursday if I, Thursday. If I have a Saturday yeah. show. Yes, I start okay. on Thursday if I have a Saturday show. Yeah, cool. I prefer spray. I just like to show up and get taken care of. <laughs> yep, same. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Sleep in or early bird? Sleep in. I mean, I guess it depends. It depends on what you consider sleeping in, but like, yeah, I, I would say probably everybody thinks I sleep in because I'm, I'm usually eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. No, yeah. I'm early bird. I'm like six, six 30. Yeah. But I'm also it used to be five, five 30. So I'm better. <laughs> yeah. I'm also up late. So I stay up till a mm, little bit after midnight. Okay. Usually, I'm so. in bed by 8 PM. Yeah. That's okay. No, that's not me at all. I'm in bed. I, I don't. I start my wind down at eleven. That's when I start my wind down. That's when I have my cigar and all that stuff. And so I'm in bed by mm, 12, 15, 12, 30 ish. So by so the time I get about yeah, seven I'm getting, hours, I'm getting yeah. some eight hours. Yep, yeah, getting seven yeah, eight hours just, every night. Yeah, just a little mm -hmm. bit later. Shift your day. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, on cardio, this was like my thought: music or a show? Cardio theater. When you're uh, when you're doing cardio, it's usually watching um like a podcast or something on youtube usually okay. it's music when i'm training music Me when too. i'm training i have a uh, youtube music and then i watch youtube stuff when i'm doing cardio same so that's i i, I don't know i don't I, i'm because i feel like my cardio is not like intense where i need to have like this boom 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 thing going like i don't know the the, the music drives me when i'm training but it, i don't need that when i'm doing cardio like it doesn't like affect my beat of my yeah of my cardio exactly. No. I guess yeah, but it, it yeah. does affect me with my training intensity. So exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's weird though. Sometimes country is like it for me. Like it just hits the soul and I'm like, yes. I never set. I never listen to country ever. Really? And I used to and I used to live in Nashville and I loved living in Nashville and the country music everywhere, but I was just not a That's I'm just crazy. not I'm just not on my own time, never. Maybe that's Never. why, though. Maybe you were like, okay, this is way too much when you leave Nashville. I don't You're think like, oh, so. like, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I like, I don't hate it, but it's just not something that I turn on ever. Like, I right. never. Okay. Mm. Different. We are literally opposites, but the same. It's so cute. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> that's why this brings so dynamic. Though, right. This podcast. <laughs> uh huh. Absolutely. All right. Post show meal or post show shower? What first? What do you look forward to? What do I look forward what to? I look forward, I look forward to the shower. Me too. <laughs> I don't. I will eat chicken and rice post show. That's totally fine. Give yeah. me my shower. One hundred percent. Get like, the tan off of me. I if I could compete and not have to get tanned, life would be beautiful. I would. Oh my god, I would love that. Yes. I hate the tan. It's me the too. worst part of the entire day. I say that all the time. It is the worst part of competing. Is the yes. Tan. It's sticky. It. it gets everywhere. It, it never looks right. Then you put the glaze on it. You feel like a little glazed donut. Yeah. Give yeah. me a shower. It's terrible. It's terrible. The most satisfying thing is the very first shower when you get back to your room after the show. <sighs> Absolutely. So and Absolutely. then you scrub and you put moisturizer on. <laughs> yes, it is the best thing ever. And then I'm ready for intimacy. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, I, was like, I was like, pull that all again. I know, right? It worked. It worked. There's only there's two things I look forward to after a show, and it's the shower and then an energy drink. I always yes. want an energy drink right after the show. It's just that carbonation, it. it's that sweetness, and that's it. I'm, I'm Something good. cold. Yes. Yeah. And after that, like you know, the, the post show meal is just for me. I usually do like steak, potatoes, and like a salad and a glass of wine or something like that, which is what I eat normally anyway. Right. It's just, it's just I eat more of it and don't weigh it. Basically, is what I do. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Well, you just answered this question then, but I had sushi or burger for post show. So you like red meat. I do. I definitely do. do. And if it was post show, it's absolutely burger versus sushi. Like to me, sushi is not a, not a cheat meal. Like no. it's, I, I, I'll, I'll eat sushi, but I'm more of a sashimi person too. I'm not really, I'm not really into all the sushi really? rice and everything. So um, I'd rather have just the fish by itself. So if I'm, if I'm doing it post show, it's definitely burger, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. See, I usually go for sushi just because I'm usually doing back-to-back -back shows. So mm -hmm. 
feel like it just keeps me a little bit tighter. But like if I have nothing going on, I'll definitely do like a burger or fries with mayo and ranch and all the <laughs> the dipping. See, and see, I would instead of a burger, I would rather have a steak. Like me I'm too. more of the like I said, steak, potatoes, nice salad. And the, for me, it's the salad with the dressing. Like yes. I want to put dressing on my salad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you like, and I could do post show together. And yes, you know, a nice five star restaurant. Yes, exactly. And dine. That's what Drew and I like too. We yes, like to dress up and go out for a nice. Absolutely, meal. that is yes. me a hundred percent. I'm like, I, if I'm going to eat crap, it better be really good crap. One hundred percent. Like, I'm not doing this McDonald's bullshit. Like, that's no. not happening. Uh-huh. It's going to be expensive, and I want to be yes. wine and dine. Sorry, and I want to be able to look cute doing it too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like we're in gym clothes or a bikini yes. all the time. It feels nice to put something else on. Mm-hmm. That's right, something, you know, back to, well, hold on, back to the relationships thing. That's an effort thing too. Guys are very people. Ladies, do your hair, do your makeup, put cute clothes on. You look the best you ever looked in your life when you're doing your preps. You know what I mean? Get done up. That's a really great point. That is something that Drew used to say to me. Why do you get done up for work? And But then when I ask you to go to dinner, you show up like this. Mm-hmm. Men are visual creatures, y'all. They really Men are. are visual creatures. They, they appreciate like, it. Even, even like if my ring is dirty, he's like, why are you not yes. like cleaning your ring? Same. Why are you not taking care of that? And I'm like, same. My husband's why the am same I not way. thinking about these things? But yeah. it's because it means something yep. to them. They gave us this ring. They want it to look good on our finger. They want us to look good when, when we go out. They want us to feel, they want to feel like we're getting ready for them to present yep. to them. Absolutely. And that makes them feel good. And that's mm-hmm. a very small task. We do it every day. Like, why can't we do it for them? Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> that was a great point. Nailed, nailed that one on the head. Good job. <laughs> good. That was a good rapid fire. What else? We got more? It was literally one more. Do you want a fork forever or a spoon forever? If you could only spoon. have one. Spoon. Me too. Yeah. Baby you can spoon. eat everything with a spoon. You can't eat everything with a fork. Like you can't eat soup with a fork. What about a spork? Yeah, a spork, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That would be that would be the best way to do it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was an option. Yeah. That's we should get a beyond the be, beyond the between. <laughs> yeah, right? Sporks. <laughs> I love it. This is your spork. Here you go. <laughs> All right, that was all my rapid fire. Okay, so we and I actually we had people ask if we were going to do like the bro chat questions and stuff too, which some of those were on there, right? Yeah. So we yeah we said the utensil thing already. The (laughs) the one we're not going to do because it doesn't apply to us. Right. The the, the acronym. Yes. No, it doesn't apply to us, so we're not going to do that one. Can't do that one. But we answered the rest of them. Yeah. And favorite restaurant food. I think we already said that. For me, it's I always get steak. That's what I do. Steak. Steak. I would prefer steak all the time. Yeah. Always. Trying to see if there's anything else on here real quick. We yeah. love sushi, but if I have to pick, like if I'm like going all out, like Sean said, I'm going to yeah. a steak restaurant. Yeah. Well, my thing too is like with sushi, it needs to be really good. Like if it's not fresh and like all that kind of stuff, it's just not, it's not sushi. Really sushi can go real bad real quick. Yes. Know well, where you're at. Like yeah. is there fresh fish here? Yeah. If like, you're like, if you're like in the middle of the country, it's probably not going to be great sushi, you yeah. know? Exactly. Being a coastal place. Yeah. And that's that's actually a really good point too. Like if you're going to like a seafood hot like seafood restaurant, order seafood. Don't order steak. You know, right. if you're going to a steakhouse, order steak. Don't order seafood. seafood. So go for whatever their specialty is, because the other thing is just there for the people that want the other thing. Right. You know, so like, especially if you're, you know, if you're, again, if you're in coastal places, if you're, you know, in Miami or something like that, then seafood. Yes. Absolutely. Seafood. That's yes. the way to go. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. So things to think about in that, in that scenario. It's hard to screw up a steak other than cooking it too, too long. And they can always give you a new steak. You That's know what I mean? fixable. Yes. Yeah. But if the, if the fish is fishy, <laughs> nothing you can do about that. Check, check, please. Yeah, I'm right. not paying for that. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. So there's not, there's not, there's not saving that. There's no saving yeah. that. So, no. um, but yeah, we actually got a ton of questions that came in. Um, so we'll have more to, to go through. Let me see. I'm just see if there's any, we can do like one more before we finish out. Maybe we could um, just do an entire pod of questions. We I'm should. Probably, yeah. We should. Cause we have some good ones on here and you have yeah, quite we do. a bit. Okay. And they would take, it would take a while to, to go through and actually explain everything too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, some of these are about like eating disorders and stuff, which we can cover all that stuff in other in other. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, and yeah, keep the questions coming, you guys. Uh, you can comment in on the, um, the YouTube channel. We're collecting all of them, so whenever you send in a question, we're collecting them and sticking them into a notepad so that we can we can make sure that we can go through and 
and answer everything for you guys. So, so with that, we are on to our next week of, of, of prep. <laughs> Another week down. <laughs> I know. And one more, one and more on down, to another, one more to go. Yes. I know, right? So you're, is it six weeks now for you? Six weeks out. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yep. So. And you're nine? Just, yeah, just under nine. Just okay. under nine. Yep. So we're rolling, rolling right along here. Well, if we <laughs> don't see you before then, happy birthday. Thank you. And yes. have fun on your trip. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my birthday is on Wednesday. So. Yes. Um, we'll be gone from Thursday to Tuesday, so it'll be a good time. Um, just relaxing and got a bunch of shows we're gonna go see. We we're talking about comedy. We're going to a couple comedy shows, things like that. Fun. So yeah, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. Good. I'm excited about it. Lots good. of Instagram we can't wait, we content. Can't, we can't, yeah, we can't. We all can't wait to hear about it either. I know, right? I'll be posting. Don't worry. Like I said, I get good. dressed up. I get dressed up everywhere I go. I have. I know. I have fits for everything. <laughs> I need to come raid your closet for the Olympia. <laughs> People say it all the time. They're like, where do you, where do you get all your stuff? Fashion Nova, y'all. Fashion Nova. <laughs> the majority of my clothes are Fashion Nova. They're cheap. They're cute. And I always tell people, I'm like, whenever you wear them on Instagram once, you can't wear them again. So why spend a ton of money on clothes? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Fashion so, Nova is it. It is. Yeah. And they've always got new stuff coming in. Like, that's why I like going on there. Because if it's if, if I've got an idea in my head of what I want, they've probably got it. You right. know what I mean? They could so. solidify it, bring it all mm -hmm. together. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So fashion. Nova, I can't wait. I can't wait to see the outfits. We all love a shopping outfit. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll have a new look. I'll have a new look like three times a day. Every so night. I know, right? <laughs> we got this. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. So this was episode four, managing a relationships with your partner in and outside of this sport and all of the fun things like that. Um, subscribe, like, comment. Uh, anything else you wanted to add before we, we close out for today? No. Okay. See awesome. you guys next week. Yeah. We'll see you guys next week, guys. Bye. Love your spouse. <laughs> yes. Lots of ways. Yes. <laughs>